Hi! This is a demo that will showcase the Lenaro build system, our current Pandaboard Android Lenaro evaluation build, which is called an LEB, and some benchmarks. So let's get started. Well, to get it up and running with Panda, users should go to android build.lenaro.org, which is the website you see here. And uh, from this website, you can all, not only select some builds that you would like to try, but you can also request some new builds, uh, your custom builds, by clicking on the new build link, and you will be given a chance to select the board you want to have, and also uh, some uh, other parameters for the build that you want to try. So once you submit this request, it will be sent to the cloud, and in under an hour, the build will be ready. Um, and actually, this approach make it, makes it very easy to try out the latest support for a low-cost board like the ones Lenaro supports without having to try uh, to follow many steps on a wiki like uh, for example the, um, on the Panda board you can see how complex it can be you have to set up a toolchain to download the right kernel and uh, U-boot and Android sources and have the whole thing built together and also of course put that software on, on, the, on the board so with this service, uh, you can really, in a few few minutes, uh, try out some builds that people have made, or re even request your own build and participate to testing. Right. So let's try out the uh, LEB Panda build. So the builds for Panda, and I'm going to pick up this one, for example. And here you can see uh, some uh, configuration parameters for for this for this build. So you can see what it corresponds to. And you see uh, the log, so corresponding to the complete log build, and you will see um, how all the steps that uh, that have been run to generate this image, right? And um, now we can directly go ahead and download the uh, the, the images, right? So there's boot.tar.bzip2 corresponding to the bootloader and stuff bootloader and kernel, I guess, then system.tar.bz2, there you are, and user data.tar.bz2. Alright, and we'll get back when uh, the uh, downloads are over. So you can see um, the size of those. Uh, 36 megs for the system that targeted bz2 image, uh, 364 KB for the user data, which is obviously quite small, and boot that targeted bz2 um, rather small, 3.5 megs for U boot and the kernel. Okay, now the downloads are over. I put the files in a working directory, and there's another thing I downloaded is which is Lenaro Image Tools, which is a set of utilities to create binary images to flash uh, your boards, the boards that Lenaro supports. You can get Lenaro Image Tools on Launchpad, as you can see here, on launchpad.net slash Lenaro Image Tools. Okay, and this contains a Lenaro Android Media Create utility that we are going to run. But first, we have to prepare an SD card, or we have to insert an SD card that's going to be um, flashed by a Lenaro Android Media Create. So I insert it in a card reader connected to my PC, my Linux box. And now the next thing to do is check what devices, what device Linux uses to represent uh, my media card. So you type D message, like diagnostic message. Uh, this displays the uh, messages coming from the Linux kernel on your Linux box or on your PC. Okay, there we are. So it tells us, oh, it just it has just recognized an SDB device with one partition, SDB1. Uh, that corresponds to the board, uh, to the board, to the memory card that you've just inserted here. Okay. Now it's time to learn to run Lenaro Android Media Create. So I prepared the command line to save some time. Uh, let's have a look at the arguments. So the first argument is the type of device minus minus def panda. Then the second argument is the root file system archive that was built previously, that was built from, uh, that was downloaded by yourself. Uh, then the kernel and bootloader. 
plus the user data and the last argument is the path to the device that you want to reflash so in my case it's it's gonna be a slash dev slash sdb so let's do it okay so it shows what it's gonna do uh, with my SD card that's the plan so um, it sees some existing partitions let's forget them anyway oh, so um, I, I'm 100% I'm sure to select uh, slash dev slash sdb make sure you don't select slash dev slash sda because it would wipe out the partitions on your PC so I say yes and now we can have a look and see what it does it's going to be quite quick so I want to um, um, keep an eye on what's going on. If you remember, the size of the Android image was uh, 36 megs, so that's the, um, the the size of the compressed archive. But it's not so big. So here, as you can see, it's gonna it's it's uh, starting to format some partitions, create and format partitions on the um, SD card. Right. So. another uh, file system that's getting formatted here creating super blocks and file system accounting information that's typical of uh, Linux file systems uh, creating another one you could see, as um, you may see later you, um, there are several uh, partitions that are created on uh, the SD card not only one but several ones Right, another partition, another fat, fat partition this time. Here you can see that it creates a boot script that's gonna what um, uBoot takes uh, as a sequence of instructions to run at boot time. And I believe we are quite close to the end now. Apparently it's copying data to the SD card as uh, I can see the LED from my card reader that's, that's flashing, blinking a little bit. Okay, so let's get back to the terminal and see the end of the execution of the script, hopefully in a few seconds from now. All this depends, of course, on the speed, uh, access speed of your device and um, also a card reader, of course. There we are. I told you that it would be quick. It says done creating the narrow Android image on slash dev slash sdb. Okay, we're almost ready now. All right, we are now ready to try our new SD card. So remove it. Take your panda board. Put the SD card inside. Of course, you also need to connect the SD card. You know, the USB mouse. You can also connect a USB keyboard because you have two USB ports. You also want to connect the DVI, a DVI cable that goes to your monitor, to your display. And before we connect, we power on the board. We want. We also want to see the serial output, uh, what goes uh, in the serial console. So here's a serial to USB dongle. That I'm going to connect to my board. Most laptops don't have serial ports anymore, so that's why we're using this. And now I want to have a look at my desktop and get the messages coming from the serial line. So Minica minus D dev TTYT USB zero. Right. Right. So the serial line is ready now. And now it's time to power up your board. There we are. 
so you see U-boot starting and now loading the kernel and booting the kernel and now it's time to have a look at what goes on on the screen so there's an Android logo that's displayed on the frame buffer doesn't seem to work right um, at, at, at boot time at least at least in this version but it's gonna get better once the display driver is initialized correctly so you can see what's going on there we are we have an Android logo now so <clears throat> you have to know that uh, the first time you run those uh, this, this demo it's gonna take um, some time to, to boot your, your, your board <laughs> And this sometimes happens with uh, fresh, freshly flashed uh, file systems. Uh, there are more things that are going on on the first, very first boot for that device. If you try again, uh, reboot your, your board, you will see that the experience is much better and that the whole system will boot much faster indeed. So here, this is the real thing, the thing that you will experience when you run the same things as I did. So I beg you to get to have a bit of patience here. Believe me, something will happen, but uh, not only uh, not not before a few seconds. What happens too is that the MMC port of the bang of the board is not very very quick. It would have been faster to start the device from a USB port. So there we are from a USB device, USB storage device. So now we have a launcher that we can use to, to start some applications. And you'll recognize the um, Android menu. There we are, so we have a set of programs like um, downloads, gallery, browser. I'm not connected to the internet so I can't show you the browser so far. Um, I want to show you here some benchmarks from Xerox Labs, a partner of Lenaro. So there we are. There you go. That's uh, your benchmark. That's the interface to select some benchmarks. Again, it's a bit slow for the first time you run it. But of course, uh, along the releases, this will improve. We will do our best to. We'll see that the kernels and file systems will improve. Okay, so it seems that Xerox benchmark is not quite ready yet, but I wanted to show you the real thing. I don't want to cheat and uh, show you the second boot instead of the first boot. So let's keep trying. Oh, there we are. So with uh, this uh, interface, you can select the benchmarks that you want to run. So. I um, particularly like the uh, 3D benchmarks, for example. So you can select some benchmarks like Flying Teapot. Or let's try with the cube first. So you select the benchmark and you click on Main. And then you can run the benchmarks that you have selected in the different tabs. That's the cube demo from uh, with OpenGL showing the some of the capabilities of the Panda board. You can exit the demo by clicking on uh, the right mouse button. Now let's try another one like the flying teapot. Uh, that, that's another OpenGL demo. And you see it's quite nice. It's a full HD monitor which um, 
seems to uh, to to run well. Uh, the the benchmark runs run well on it at least. Let me uh, quit it again. You have some, some 2D benchmarks as well, drawing circles, for example. And at the end, it collects some uh, data, and um, it, uh, these, this program allows you to upload your benchmark results and compare with uh, other boards or other file systems that were built. So you can, depending on the build that you have, you can compare the perform the performance that you get according to the tool chain that you use to the exact kernel that you used. And of course, you can make comparisons between boards. And let's take the last one, which is pretty pretty cute. A semi tra transparent cube, right? So there we are. You see how easy it was to to run Android on uh, your Panda board without much effort. So if you have a Panda board or another board like the Beagle board or soon the uh, other boards that are supported by Lenaro, just have a try. Thank you. Now the last part is to show you that it actually boots faster the second time you boot the device. So let, let me plug it, plug it in again. See it booting. See, it takes less time. And there we are, we have the uh, launch launcher and also a background <laughs> that didn't show up in the first time. And now you can run the, run the benchmark. So don't be scared, it's fast. Flying teapot, main and run. So this was related to the very first time we ran that, um, those demos and those, this application stack. Of course, we will uh, work uh, on this and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Well, this disappears in the first, the next releases that we make. All right. So don't forget, you can go to Android Build Lenaro and either download some pre-existing images that have been built for other people. Or just request your own images as well. That's the Lenaro Android Build Service. So this is this was Michael Abdenacker for the Android Build Service from Lenaro. Thank you.